Let's take a moment and look at the System Settings menu on the AVHX 2600 BT. I'm going to get to the System Settings menu by touching the Home button here, and we'll go to the gear right here, which is our System Settings. First up is our auxiliary input. Right now that is switched on, and it's very similar here to the AV input, which is switched off. So what this means is both auxiliary input and AV input can show up in my source screen if I want them to by switching them on, or I can make them go away from the source screen by switching them off. But I like to have those things available to me as sources, so I'm going to leave them on for right now. Next up is device connection which right now is set to Navi, and this is a very important connection if you want to run apps from your phone or want to run Pioneer's optional uh, AVIC U250 navigation system. This is the setting that you would use. Right now it's set to run the optional AVIC U250 navigation system, but if you don't want to use that setting, you could also switch to iPhone via USB. So if you use an iPhone 4 or 4S and you would like to run apps, you can use iPhone via USB. If you have an iPhone 5, 5C, or 5S, and you only want to play music but no video or apps, this is the setting to use, iPhone uh, via USB. If you have an iPhone 5 and you want to run apps from the radio, you want to use iPhone via Bluetooth. For this application, we are going to switch to iPhone via USB. Next we'll go back, and next up is our Pandora connection, which right now is set to iPhone. If you're an iPhone user and you want to listen to Pandora on this radio, that's the connection setting to use. If you're an Android phone user, switch your Pandora connection to Android. Next up are our MirrorLink settings, and for more information about MirrorLink, check out the MirrorLink videos. We'll scroll down. Next up is our firmware update. If you are going to do a firmware update to the radio or to your MirrorLink connection, this is where you would make those changes in the system. We'll go back and you can check the firmware information for the radio here. And next up are, is our MixTracks setup. For more information on MixTracks and its settings, take a look at the MixTracks video. Next up is our picture adjustment. Here we can uh, change the way the, the screen looks for brightness and contrast, for a rear view camera, for source, and depending on uh, if you have apps set up in the system, you'll be able to make those changes here as well. We'll go back. Uh, next up is our system language. Right now it is set to English. If you choose a different language, be careful. You might not be able to get back if you don't speak that language. So for right now, I'm going to keep it on, on English. And then next up is our demonstration mode that we have switched off. For more information on how to switch off the demo mode, you can check out the demo mode video. Next up is our uh, attenuation and mute, which is right now set to mute. So if you have a navigation system set up with this, uh, with this radio, or you have apps that run on the radio, or you get a phone call, you can choose to have the music that you're listening to mute, or you can choose to have it attenuate, which is lower its volume by 20 dB, lower its volume by 10 dB, or have no function at all. I like the radio to completely mute when I get a phone call or I get some sort of turn-by-turn -turn instruction from the navigation system, so I'm going to switch this on to the mute setting. Next up is our rear speaker setting. Right now that's set to full. Uh, that means full range. We can also switch that to be only subwoofer output from the rear speaker setting. All right, we're going to switch that back to full range. And next up is our keyboard setting, right now set to English. That can be set to a number of different languages. Next up is ever scroll. Right now, ever scroll is switched off, but we can choose to switch it on. This is when text appears on the screen from MP3s or radio stations. It will continuously scroll across the screen if that is on, or it'll scroll across the screen once or twice and then stop. Next up is Bluetooth audio as a source. Right now that is switched on. That means Bluetooth audio will show up in our source selection screen. If you don't use Bluetooth audio, you can switch that off so it doesn't show up. But I like Bluetooth audio. I use it a lot, so I'm going to keep that on. Next up is our Bluetooth memory clear function. If I open this up, I can dump all of the uh, memory information out of Bluetooth that's stored in the radio. So we can go back and uh, next up is our Bluetooth software update. If you want to update the Bluetooth software, you can do that from uh, this screen. We can check our Bluetooth version information with this screen right here to see if it needs to be updated. Then we have uh, our camera setting. This would be for the optional backup camera, CDBC6 backup camera. Right now, uh, the backup camera is turned off. We can switch the backup camera on when it, when it senses 12 volts, 
or when it senses ground, and you would change this based on the installation. Next up is our auto EQ measurement here, and if you touch the audio, auto EQ measurement with the optional CD-MC20 microphone installed, you can begin the auto EQ measurement from this screen. And then there's our vi video signal setting. We'll open that screen. These are all set to auto, both uh, or for AV, auxiliary, and camera. You can change them to a number of different uh, types of video, including NTSC, which is what most people in North America will use, or you can keep them set at auto. And when you're done making your changes here, you can just hit the X to escape. 